Okay, we're going to talk about our resumes here. Um, definitely one of the most important tools in our job search. Mm -hmm. And uh, often the first one that hiring managers encounter. So uh, it's important that we knock out all the different objections that somebody could have when they run across your resume and sort of preempt them and overcome them ahead of time in the wording and in the structure. You know, the overall goal of your resume is pretty much to provide an accurate, thorough, and favorable impression of your experience and skills. The thorough part is important. You want to get all the details in there that actually apply to your history, but the conciseness of this is important too, uh, and you don't want to overdo it. So if you've got like 10 or more years experience in one particular industry that apply specifically to the job you're applying for, three pages is almost always enough. If you go over three pages, you're, you better have a pretty good reason. There must be some technical detail that's mm -hmm. important there. If you're listing all of your school projects 10 years ago when you, you know, were in graduate school or in bachelor's and trying to include that as a, a notch in your belt mm -hmm. at, on your fourth page of your resume, you're pushing it and you're asking a lot of the people who are reading it. So mm -hmm. keep it under three if you can or, or at three or less if you can. I don't know if you remember as a recruiter, but for me, when I'd get an eight page resume, I'd be like, are you kidding me? No, it's ridiculous. It's too much. If you've got two or three years experience, you know, more than two pages is probably not needed. If you can keep it to two, that's great. For some of you who are watching this, you may not have even written a resume yet. You might be writing your first resume. We're not really going to dive into like the basic structure and the important building blocks of a resume, the stuff that anybody who's ever written a resume knows. We do ask you in that case to go ahead and hit pause on the video, spend 45 minutes, set a timer, get online, mm -hmm. download a couple examples of your resume of a good resume structure and crank out a first draft. Don't be picky. Don't be real mm -hmm. specific. Get a basic description of each job. And then you'll have the basic building blocks to apply everything else that we're going to be talking about. So just so you, assuming that you know the basics at this point, um, you know, the main section of the resume, as we know, are, you know, your contact information. Uh, you're going to have maybe an objectives section. Not everybody actually does that these days. So it's not mm -hmm. essential that you have a, a section about your objective. Um the job title, the company name, the company locations, and dates mm -hmm. of employment, all listed as you go down each position. Mm -hmm. Then you want descriptions of each position, of course, including tasks accomplished and the skills that you utilize there. And then a skills section. Uh, and this section lists uh, technical, administrative, or trade skills. You can put this section either before or after the job history. And then, of course, there's the education section, Recent grads like to put that at the top of the resume, um, especially if it's a reputable school that people will be impressed by, the studies you've done and certifications. Mm -hmm. So as we mentioned, you know, this course is basically focusing on resume enhancement, not resume building. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to get into the, the structure of the resume too much, but we definitely recommend you dive into these enhancement tips uh, so that you can um, spruce up what you've already got. So Taking notes is definitely going to be helpful. So as we go into the next section, which is focusing on job changes and gaps in the resume history, get out a pen and paper because a lot of this stuff you'll be able to go ahead and pull up your resume and make tweaks on pretty much right away. Mm -hmm.